Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining the Transition into Product Management series. Welcome to the Friendless Product Management Community, Product Dive. We are so happy that you, you, know, you took out of your time to join the session. Um, this is a product management community, you know, happy people, no judgment zone, excited about building amazing products. And I you know we're happy that you, you came. Um, I'm the host of today's session. My name is Tobia Takiti. I'm the founder of Product Dive. I'm a senior growth product manager at Flutterwave with about six years of product management experience across different industry, the fintech industry, edtech, logistics. And I live in Nigeria. And interestingly, I'm an athlete. I love sports. I think that's one thing Maggie and myself have in common. <laughs> Great. And when I said, I'm like, oh my God, like, this is super cool. I love sports. I love sports. And we are honored to have here with us Maggie. Maggie, don't worry. I would be on very soon where I get to introduce you here. But thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Like we are super honored and privileged to have you here. The entire product management community in Africa is excited that you honored our invitation. Okay, so I would like to know where we are joining from. Please, can we all quickly go to slido.com? Slido.com and please type in the code ash d537. It would be great to know where we are joining from. Please type in the code hash D537. Going to share. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. I can see that more people are joining the call. Welcome. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen once again. Please, can everyone go to slido.com and then you type in the code ash d537. Sharing my screen once again so that we can see the code. All right, great. Slido.com ash d537. Guys, are we there? I'm going to post that in the chat section now. Slido.com. And then we would all see where you're joining from on this screen. Okay, loading, 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 almost there. Okay, so please can we put where we are joining from can everyone please visit slider.com and then you type in the code ash d537 can we quickly do that nick please can you help me put that okay let me just do that it's all right it's in the chat i, I put it in all right great nick so can you put yours <laughs> let's know where you are joining us from you have yes i have all right okay uh something probably yeah, yeah. Um, so going to do this one more time. All right, okay, so it's not showing. So sorry guys, can we please type that in the chat section? Uh, not sure what's happening. We would like to know where we are all joining the session from. All right, great, great, great. So Ademola says it's the first session. Yeah, welcome. Zubar from Abu Dhabi, welcome. Dimple, oh my God, such a cute name. <laughs> from Atlanta, yeah, welcome. Nike from Lagos, Nigeria, welcome. This is a diverse event. People, you know, joining from different parts of the world. Abu Dhabi, Lagos, Nigeria, Kaduna, Amazing, Ibadan, that's great, Lagos. Please, can I see more? Please, can we put our locations here? 
and I'm welcoming everybody into today's session. In the BC, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right, okay. So we proceed. So welcome once again to the transition into product management series. This series started last week, and this is the second. Um, this is the second webinar in this series. We have about four series. So we have the third one, and then we have the fourth one. Like I said, the month of January is dedicated to professionals who want to transition into product management. Right. Um, our goal at Product Guys is to help practicing and aspiring product managers become highly skilled, right? And we want you to build products that serve customers. We want you to build groundbreaking products. We want you to build products that impact lives of people all over the world. And as we do this, we also our desire to see you, you know, accelerate in your, in your product management journey. We want to see you get a raise, a promotion. So we do this through many ways. We have a community, a very active community. Shout out to the Product Guys community members of over 1,000 people. And we also have like an awesome community organizers who help in managing, you know, this event, the Product Guys webinar. We have an AMA session that happens monthly, Ask Me Anything session, but this happens via Slack. And we also have like a training the admission is currently ongoing. We have a training that starts January 30 for six weeks. And one other thing that we do is that we've also partnered with AIPMM. So for people who are interested in the Certified Product Manager Certification, you know, you can take that with Product Guys. Um, we also offer career support to the community members. So if you have an interview, if you need coaching, please reach out to us. As I said, our desire is to help you become phenomenal, right? Our desire is to help you achieve your career goals. So we are happy to welcome every, everybody into the Product Dive community. We have a training that starts on the 30th and ends on 13th of March. So please, you are welcome. Yay, to the reason why we are here today. Everyone, please, can you all welcome Maggie? Please, can you type in the chat section, welcome Maggie Crowley. Please, she's the director of product. <laughs> I drift. I love drift so much. Like, how many of us know drift? Please, can we type in the chat section, do you know drift? And if you've ever had to interact with drift before, please, can you type that in the chat section as well? I have interacted with Drift so many times. I see Drift. I, I can tell you websites off the top of my head right now that uses Drift as a chat bot. Yeah, if Thank you typed you. in a chat bot, you've probably talked to Drift. Yeah, so. exactly. So she's the director of product. You see, we are very honored to have her here to share with us our experience, you know, um, about our product management journey or our journey into product management and what she looks out for when she's hiring product managers. Apart from that, she's an Olymp Olympian, like, woo, and happy. I'm super excited about that one. And she's an alum, HBS, Harvard. So guys, please, for those of you who have like, you know, you have plans of maybe getting like an MBA in Harvard, we have her right here. So just in case you have like questions around that, maybe this is not the session for that, but I think that you can, you know, maybe sometime after this session, send her a message. Um, Thank you so much, Maggie, for honoring our invitation. Um, guys, so this is how the session would go. So Maggie will talk to us how she got into product management, you know, what we should look out for for about 25 minutes. And the rest of the time is to answer all your questions. But guys, remember that this session would end at 6 p.m. WAT on the dot. So please make sure your questions are direct, concise, you know, easy to understand, you know, so that it's easy to answer those questions. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to Maggie. Maggie Thank you. To you. Yes, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can share. Perfect. Great. And while I'm going through this, um, I would love if people are putting questions in the chat. I'll try to keep it up on my screen. 
Um, I'd love to make sure that it's useful for everyone and that I'm covering stuff that that's helpful. So please feel free to drop questions and I'll either answer them at the end or, or while I'm going. Um, so like Toby mentioned, my name is Maggie and I've been in product for seven or eight years. Um, I started as a PM in a rotation program, and then I went to a really small startup, was the only PM there. And then for the past three years, I've been at Drift. Uh, we're a marketing platform. If you've talked to a chatbot on someone's website, chances are that chatbot is powered by Drift. Um, so this is sort of what I've been up to for the past couple of years. But um, what I'm going to talk to uh, talk about today is sort of the common paths that people take to get into product, some skills that I think are really important when you're trying to get your first product job, and a couple places where you can go to learn more. So hopefully that's all helpful. Um, but where I want to start is this is sort of the, the path that I've been on. I didn't start in product right from the beginning. And I think the most important thing I, I want to say today is that none of these things are things you have to do to be a PM. There are many, many, many different ways to get into product. Lots of different people can be amazing at being product managers. There's not like a right way to do it. So I'm gonna share what I did, how I thought about it. Um, but you know, you don't have to go to business school, although it can help. You don't have to get certified, although it can help. You don't have to be technical. So you know, stay hopeful because lots of people can be successful at the job. Um, and just to be really specific, so Toby mentioned I started as a, my first, I guess, job was as an athlete. Um, I was an Olympian. I had never really thought about what my job should be. Uh, so when I graduated college, I just kind of got whatever job I could find. I was an analyst. And then from there, I did that for a year or two. And then I wanted to move to New York. So I found this cool consulting firm that I joined. And I got really lucky because there were some really smart people that worked there. And they had all gone to business school. And they helped me think about, you know, what do I like doing? What do I want to do? What's interesting? Because I still hadn't really figured that out. And I think a lot of times when you don't know what you want to do, business school is a good option because it gives you a couple of years to think about, you know, what jobs are out there or, you know, what you might be a good fit for. Um, so that was sort of my path. I went from consulting to business school, like many people. And then it wasn't until I was at business school that I first even heard about products. So I had never heard about it. And I did an internship in really in the ads business at Google and my roommate was a PM. And so we would come home at the end of the day and talk about, you know, what we were learning and what we had talked about that day at work. And it just felt like his job was way cooler than mine. Uh, he was doing more interesting stuff and I wanted to do the job that he had. And so, you know, I came back from that summer and I was like, amazing. I want to be in product too. Like, this is the coolest job. Um, but I had no idea what to do. And again, I had never heard about it. And I didn't have an engineering degree. I didn't have a math degree. And I just sort of had no, wasn't really sure where to start. And that was back long enough ago that a lot of big companies required you to have those things. And so I was sort of like, okay, well, I got to find someone who's going to let me in the door without having those things. So my approach to getting my first product job was first, like I read everything I could find. I just Googled what is a product manager. I followed a bunch of people on Twitter. I tried to talk to people who I went to school with to see like what the job was. Then I tried to edit my resume to show that I had the skills that a product manager might have. And then I just applied everywhere just to every job I could possibly think of applying to. And while I was doing that, I spent a ton of time practicing. So I thought that, okay, I don't have a product background. You know, I'm not an engineer. Um, I'm not super technical. I'm not going to get that many interviews. So when I get an interview, I want to ace that interview. I want to make sure that if I get my foot in the door, that I'm going to show up and do as good a job as I can do to maximize my chances of getting that first job. Because I had heard, as I'm, I'm sure you all have heard, that the first PM job is the hardest one to get. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to do everything I can to get that first job. Um, and while I was at business school at the time and it came, when it came down to it, I really only had two interviews I was doing, one at Amazon and one at TripAdvisor. And um, I totally failed my Amazon interview, just like messed it up, didn't do a good job, didn't get the job. And so it came down to just the opportunity I had with TripAdvisor. And like I mentioned, I spent a ton of time practicing and I'm going to go through what I, what I did to get to practice that interview and like highlight the skills that I had. But I do think that um, 
just as much as the practice and being able to talk about product was important. I think what helped me get that first job was that I really made it clear that I was going to do anything I could to work hard and learn the role. So yes, there were people that had done products in the past and that wasn't me, but I was going to try really hard. I knew I was so hungry and I knew I was going to do like good work for them. And so I tried to really make that clear in the interview. So that was sort of how I got the job. Um, but again, I just want to highlight that they're like, that's not the only way. That was just the way that worked for me. And there's lots of different paths and there's lots of different paths based on what your background is. And there's no, in the same way that there's no one right way to get into product, there's also no one right product manager. So one of the best PMs I've ever worked with majored in theater. Um, and then she worked in sales. And then I've worked with PMs who were designers or who were engineers or who, who worked in support roles. So many people have had different jobs before they were product managers and they're all great in different ways. Um, so luckily there's not just like one thing you have to do. There's lots of paths um, into the job. And just to be a little bit more specific, I think the, the paths that I've seen that are pretty common are you can get a associate PM role. So that's an entry level junior PM role at a big company. Some companies like Facebook and Twitter will have uh, rotation programs you can do. Other companies are just big enough to hire people straight out um, who don't have that experience. Um, and I think the other really common path is once you get into a company that has a PM role, you can try to switch over to that role when you're inside the company. Um, or you can try to join an early stage startup and sort of carve out the PM role for yourself. That's a path I've seen people do. And then another way is I've definitely seen people found their own companies, have their companies get acquired, and then they become product managers. Although I would say that's probably like a lot longer of a timeline and harder to do than just trying to get the product role in the first place, but it's definitely possible. So these are the different paths that I've seen people take. Um, and almost regardless of like which one is right for you or which one you go after, what's available to you, I think there's a, co a couple of things that you're going to they're going to help you be more successful sort of no matter what. And so these are the things that, that I suggest everyone do and that I did when I was trying to get that first job. So the first step is, you know, regardless of which one of these things you do, don't just like drop your resume in and not say, and then hope that someone's going to contact you. I think the first rule of getting your first PM job is try to network your way into the company. Try to find someone who can talk to you, who can tell you about the company, what they care about, what it's like to work there. Um, that'll help you give better answers um, in your interview if you're, if you're going to get one. The next thing I would say is try to meet someone on the PM team. So if you can talk to someone who is in the role that you're trying to get at the company you're trying to work at, they'll be able to tell you, like, what is the role like? What do they care about? Um, what kinds of product managers are successful there? What skills do they look for? So it's so helpful to be able to find that. And then maybe you have a really great conversation and they can put in a good word for you with the hiring manager. So I would always try to find someone to talk to. Um, and then the next thing I would do is, dip, I'm not sure if this always is the case at every company, but at least for, for me when I joined Drift, I met the recruiter whose name is Keith, probably like a year and a half before I joined the company. So I had met him and there wasn't a role that was open that was a good fit for me. So rather than just walking away, I said, well, let's keep in touch. Like maybe this will, there'll be something that opens up. So over the next year or so, we sort of kept in touch here and there. And then once the job did open up, we had already been in contact and it was way easier for me to get back in an interview for that job because I had kept that connection alive. So there's just sort of like the networking advice I would give. The fourth thing, the thing I'm going to spend some more time on here with you today is once you get in the door, so there's two parts, right? It's like you have to get in the door to get that interview and then you have to ace the interview. And I would say on the interviewing side, the best thing you can do is figure out how to showcase all the skills you have that are a match for the PM role, even if you haven't been a PM before. And there's definitely transferable skills from other jobs. And if you just figure out how to talk about them in the right way, that's gonna be really helpful to you when you're in that interview. So, I, I'm like very specifically what I did um, when I was interviewing back in the day, and this is what I suggest people do now is not just to know what your skills are, but to really write them down. Because what, at least for me, I find that when I'm doing, when I'm interviewing, it's really hard to remember in that moment, all of the stuff you've done. Like, it's really hard to just assume 
that when someone asks you a question like, you know, tell me about a time where you, you know, helped a team do something. It's like, you don't want to be sitting there struggling to find an example. You want to remember all that stuff. So I would say write down examples that match sort of the buckets of skills that PMs have to have so that you can have that information available to you and you can showcase all the good work that you've done in the past. And this is a, there's a lot on the slide. And so I'm going to make these slides available to you. I just wanted to put it all in one place. Um, and because these are the skills that I think, regardless of what job you're in, you can show that you have them or you've done them. And then you can talk about them with the person who you're interviewing with. So you have to be able to, as a PM, you have to be able to communicate with all different types of people. It's a cross-functional role. So you have to be able to show your like structured thinking in written communication and talking out loud. Um, it's really important for you to be able to use data. So can you find and point to examples of using data in your current job or in a past role? Um, it's also really important to be curious. So as a product manager, it's really important that you care more about getting the right answer than being right all the time. And so can you show an example of how you like, you know, asked a lot of really good questions and, and figured something out that was helpful for your team? Another thing that's really important about PMs is understanding the business. So you can't, as a product manager, you're not going to be successful if you're just like shipping stuff. It has to be stuff that matters. So can you tie your your work back to why it's important for the business. It doesn't matter what job you have. If you can articulate like, yeah, I might, you know, I work in support at this company and like, it's really important because, you know, it has this impact on the customer. Like that's the type of thing that the, the interviewer would want to hear. Another thing about the PM role, and, and I'm sure you heard this from the, from the other people who've spoken at these events, um, is that you're not in charge of anyone. So as a PM, like your team doesn't report to you, but you still have to motivate them to get stuff done. So you're going to have to have, you have to be able to have influence over them. So another thing an interview is, interviewer is going to want to know is, have you been able to convince people to follow your advice or convince people to work on a project that you thought they should work on? So having a good example for how you've done that is, is really important too. And then again, results. So this is kind of similar to the business impact one, but as a PM, you have to create results. There's That's just like at the end of the day, you're only going to get um, the PM job if you can do that. So can you point to examples of how you've created results in the past? Like that's going to help you as well. And then the last one I'll mention here is customers. So to be a good PM, you really have to have a sense for what a good product is. And a really common question that you're going to get in an interview is like, tell me about a product that you love. And if you go into that interview and you say, oh, I love Instagram and you don't say anything else, the person's going to be like, okay, well, why? What makes it a good experience? Why do you like it? Why do you think people use it? What would you change about it? Like you have to think more deeply about the products that you're using and you have to have a sense for what's good and what's bad and what works and what doesn't work because no product is perfect and there's always something that people can improve. Um, so being able to articulate that is, is also really important. So Again, this is, this is like all of the stuff I would want to know or be able to talk about in an interview for an entry-level PM. And one thing is like, maybe you don't have examples for all of this. Like maybe you are in school and you haven't been able to like have enough internships or something, whatever the case may be. Another option that you can do is you can try building a side project. This is a pretty common thing I see people do and that's okay. I don't have any examples that match all these different skills. So I'm gonna come up with something I'm gonna build on the side. And then I can talk about that to show that I'm thinking about products in the right way. This obviously only works if you have an idea and you have time to do it, um, but it can be a really good way to point to like, okay, maybe I don't have the right work experience, but let me show you what I did to, to you know, uncover a customer problem, set a goal, you know, build something, see if it worked and learn from it. So if you can show that full loop of learning, I think that's gonna make you successful. So I will admit that this is a ton. Um, and that's because the PM role is kind of a hard job. Um, you have to be the glue that pulls everyone together. You have to understand the business, um, understand the customer. You have to be able to figure out what the right thing is to do at any given time. You have to be able to make decisions um, and trade-offs, hold a high bar for quality, um, figure out how to done, get things done quickly at the same time. 
And there are just so many parts to the job um, that I know it can just like feel a little bit like this when you're trying to figure out like, how do you get through it? And like, what do you do? Um, and I just want to call out that like, it's not worth putting yourself through this if you're looking, if you think the job is going to be glamorous or you think it's going to be like super special and you're going to like, everyone's always going to sing your praises all day long. Like that's not the case. Um, so it's just worth knowing that before you get started. Um, and I think it's important to think about your why. So why do you want to be in products? Like what's exciting to you about the role? Because that's another thing that is going to shine through when you have an, an opportunity to talk to someone in an interview is especially when it's your first job having a really crisp answer to why you want the job is going to be really helpful. And I love this. Um, Lenny was one of the first product managers at Airbnb. He has this amazing newsletter. And I, I love he, the way he thinks about this because like, if this is the kind of stuff that you're looking for out of a job, chances are you're not going to be happy as a PM, right? Like if you, if you want to sort of work alone, um, if you want to have your way, if you want to be right, like it's going to be really frustrating and it's probably not going to be something that you enjoy doing. Um, but on the other side, if what you love doing is solving problems, if you like working closely with lots of people, just like working on strategy, getting stuff done, leading teams, making decisions, like chances are it is going to be a really fun, a fun role. So I would think about which of these is it more of a fit for you? Which one do you like? And make sure that you're, you're going to put yourself through the process of getting a PM job for the right reasons. Um, and I think the last, the last thing I'll say, and I want to start answering questions is like, don't get discouraged. It can take a lot of tries to get that first job. It can feel really challenging. Hopefully my hope is that the industry will start hiring more people and opening up those PM roles because it really, so many people can be good at the job. Um, but might take a couple of tries like me, you might fail at lots of interviews before you get one that goes well. So don't worry about that. You can still have a good career and fail interviews. And here's some stuff, um, Toby, I'll make sure that you have links after this, but these are the, the things that helped me when I was getting an interview, very especially the cracking the PM interview book by Jackie, I found to be like very, very helpful. You're gonna get case interviews and those I find to be very challenging and she has a lot of good strategies for how to do well at those interviews. So I would highly suggest that. All right, so that's my spiel. Um, now I wanna answer questions. It looks like I have the chat open here. Um, can a business analyst easily transform into a product manager? I think so. I started as a business analyst. Um, I think that can be a really strong place to start because depending on the type of analyst role that you have, um, if you're able to talk about, you know, what, how the business works, that's a huge part about being a PM, being able to understand your business model and understand the different levers that you have. Um, I think that can be a great place to, to show your understanding of the business and like show how you'd go from here to there. Also, it's helpful to have when you start as a PM, like one skill that you're really good at that you can bring to the PM team. And if you're super analytical and you're really great with data, that could be something that you say, you know, I'm going to bring this to the team while I learn how to do all the other skills um, that a PM might need. So I think so. Let's see. Um, is there any all-in-one tool that can provide help to every PM task? I th if there is, you should build it because you'll make a billion dollars. Um, I don't think there's a tool. Um, unless you guys have one and I've never heard of it, in which case, please let me know and it'll make my life easier. Um, well, you need Pam Salesman to bring industry where some common skills across the board. Yeah, common skills. So again, I would say talking to customers, interviewing customers, understanding data, um, being able to make trade-offs is really important. I think one of the challenges with a, with a PM role, no matter what, what um, industry you're in is like, you have to be able to pull in information from lots and lots of different teams and decide what to do. And that's the same, no matter what type of product you're working on. And so the more that you can understand qualitative data, quantitative data, the strategy, the market and make choices, I think the better position you're gonna be as a PM. Um, let's see. Anything such as a product manager intern? Yeah, interns are a great opportunity. Um, again, I did an internship as at business school. There were other companies that were hiring product interns. I didn't know about the job, so I didn't even know to apply to them at the time. But I think that's a great way if you can find one um, to get an in and then try to figure out like, 
whether it's a good fit for you. Because I also think it's it's nice. Um, one of the reasons why I I'm really happy that my first PM job was at a rotation program was I got to try it out because I wasn't sure if I would like the role. Because I I mean as as I'm sure you guys know, it's kind of like a every a hot role that everyone wants to have. And so I, you know I didn't I wanted to make sure I wasn't getting caught up in the hype. And just like, oh, I want to be a PM because I'm supposed to be a PM. I wanted to make sure I actually like the job. So I think an internship is a great opportunity to figure that out too. Okay. Would I lean towards transferable skills or PM experience? Honestly, like I would, the first PM, like I mentioned before, the first PM job is the hardest PM job to get. And so I would say like, just if you can get someone to stamp you with the product manager label, it's going to make your life easier. Um, so I would say like, if you have an opportunity go for it, but if not, I would focus on developing those skills so that you can have a good conversation um, with a hiring manager once you, once you get in. Um, PMs are often called the CEOs of their product. Do you think this is a helpful framing of the role or not? And why? Um, Colton, hi, it's nice to see you. Uh, no, this is a good, good tee up. Uh, that's a bad framing. I think the, the problem with being at being a P focusing on, um, let's see if I can pull it back up. Like this slide makes me think a lot about the, the narrative of being the CEO of your product, because like as a PM, you're not dictating what people do. What you're doing is you're trying to gather information to, to help your team decide what the right path forward is. And so if you're approaching it like, I'm the boss, I'm the CEO, I'm in charge, we're gonna do what I say, chances are your engineers are just gonna look at you and be like, no, we're not gonna do that. you know, Or they're gonna maybe go along with what you're asking them to do, but they're not gonna do a super great job because they don't care, they don't understand. you know, like It's just not gonna work out for you very well. And you're gonna, be, you're gonna have a lot hard time with all your other peers at the company because you're probably gonna be annoying to work with. So I would say like, definitely not that. I, I think, I don't, I don't know who said it this way, but so I remember someone once said that being a PM is more like being a janitor. So you're kind of like cleaning up, making sure everything's all put together. You're thinking about what to do and you're supporting your team. I think that's a better framing uh, than the CEO role. Wait, I lost my place in chat. Okay. Do you think, whoops, uh, a digital marketer is better? Um, I can help you with the question. I, I'm, I think I'm good so far, but I'll let you know if, right. I, if I lose my place in the chat here. Right. Um, let's see, digital marketer, product marketing manager. I'm not sure. I think there's all sorts of paths. I think some people being a, being a product marketing manager is really fun if you like to have more of a position and like launching new products and, and helping customers get those, uh, get adoption of products. That can be really great. I personally, I'm not super great at that part. And I like more of the, like, what should we build in the first place type of questions, which is why product is, is where I am. Um, let's see. What are the day-to-day -day technical skills that even non-technical PMs need to master? Good question. Um, I would say not everyone agrees with this, but in my opinion, SQL, um, SQL is probably the one thing that's useful for a PM to know because that will allow you to pull your own data and answer your own questions. So one of the things that's really annoying when you're on a product team is when you constantly have to ask your engineers to pull information for you. And if you can be independent and go and pull your own data, that's gonna help, A, help you do better at your job, which is figuring out what's working and what you should do next. But B, it'll make your, it'll, um, get you a little credit with your engineering team because you're like just a little bit technical and you don't need to rely on them for everything and you're kind of independent um, on that type of stuff. So I, on my very first PM job in the first six months I had, I spent a bunch of time learning SQL. If you can use Excel or Google Sheets, it's really not much harder than that. It just takes a little memorization and, and, and playing around. Um, so I would really suggest doing that. It's something that you can do pretty much no matter what. There's lots of tools available on the internet for how to learn uh, SQL and that can be really helpful. So I would say that's the one thing. Um, I, I don't think you need, like you don't need to code. I think that's probably a waste of time unless you're, you wanna be a product manager for something really technical. So right now, um, one of the products I run is powered by AI 
So it's helpful for the product managers on that team to understand some of the basics of uh, machine learning so that they can understand what their engineers are doing. But by and large, that's probably it. Let's see. How has my MBA helped me in my present role? So business school is interesting. I don't think it's super helpful in the beginning because it's the, the frameworks and things you learn in business school are more helpful to you when you're in senior, more in senior management. So I would say when I started off as a PM, business school was helpful because I had, it taught me more about how to understand the business and like how the business worked, which I didn't, I, I wanted um, to have more depth in. So I could help, I could have a better understanding of like how the products we were building were going to help support the business. Um, but now that I'm a director, my role is really more to think about like what should we build next and like what does the future look like? So the, the strategy classes and learning about how strategy works and how businesses are run overall is really helpful for that because it helps me think about like the context the business is in, where we're going, what we should build, how to think about what other companies are building at the same time. Um, so that's something that I think has been really helpful. And I will say that that's like the direct skills that, I, that are helpful from getting an MBA. I would also say that um, as a woman, getting an MBA gave me access to a network that I didn't have before. And so like, it may not be useful to everyone, but I think also if you're from um, a background that isn't as common in tech, it, it can be helpful and it can give you access to a network and make it a little easier for you to get into spaces that you may not already have access to. So it was definitely a benefit for me, uh, but again, not always a benefit for everyone and kind of depends on, on where, you, where you are and what schools are available to you. Let's see. Um, how do you manage all stakeholders? Oh, that's a great question. Um, without losing track of the product essence. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think managing stakeholders or just hurting all of the cats uh, around you is probably one of the things I spend the most time on as a product manager. And honestly, I think that my, my strategy for, for managing all the different people I have to talk to and think about is just making sure that I'm always treating people like smart adults. So you might get a question from, uh, you know, a sales rep or from customer success that you're like, like, I, we don't like, of course it doesn't make sense to build that thing, but what's important to remember is like, not everyone has the same context or the same set of facts that you have. So treat their questions and their, their things that they're asking you as important and give them a real answer. So give people the, the decency of saying like, this is why I'm not doing that. Like this, this is why we're choosing to do these things. This is the information I have. And this is why the question that you're, the suggestion that you're making doesn't really make sense for us yet. And I think the more you can give people around you the context of the decisions you're making and kind of bring them along with you on that journey, the, the better your relationships are gonna be. And the, honestly, the better ideas they're gonna bring you. So I think it's really important to just like, spend the time to work with those teams, make sure they understand what you're building. I think probably one of the hardest parts about the PM role is that it's tiring. Like it can get really exhausting to constantly tell people the same stuff over and over and over again, but it's just part of the job because your job is to pull all those teams together and to make your product successful. So like just part of the, part of the game is making sure that you're talking to the, to the different teams and making sure that they understand what you're building and that they're happy. Um, so like, that's what I do. And to get extremely tactical on your question, I have a list, like I have a notes app that I use and I have a list of all the people that I need to talk to about different things. And I just make sure I remember to talk to them. So like, I just write it all down. All right, let's see. Do you think a role of a PM would be difficult without knowledge and coding? Nope, I don't know how to code. No idea how to do it. Um, I've seen it on people's computers and it looks complicated. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the shortest answer. Um, what are some of the misconceptions in product? I think Colton's was a really good one that you're the CEO. Um, I think another good one is that like, People think that as a product manager, you it's you were you're just building like your ideas. That's definitely not true. Um, as a product manager, you're more trying to uncover the right ideas, and you're often not the person with the right ideas. 
um, which is, I, I think it's really rewarding when your teams come up with these really great ideas for what to build and then you make customers successful. So like, I think that's actually really cool. Um, another misconception of product. I think probably the biggest one is that it's like super fun and cool all the time. Um, it's definitely not fun and cool all the time. It's again, like I mentioned earlier, it's pretty challenging and there's a lot, I think it's easy to get lost in the details of it. There's so many different, you know, you have to talk to customers and you have to talk to sales and you have to talk to marketing and then you have to talk to, you know, your team and then you have bugs, you know, things that are breaking and then you have new ideas and there's all this stuff that you want to get done. Um, and so I think a lot of product is just like managing all the inputs and trying to figure out what the best thing is to do. Um, so it's just a lot of like detailed work that you have to pay attention to. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another, I would, I'd be curious, like, as, as we're going here, other people put in the chat what they think they've heard rumors they've heard about product managers and I'll see if I can, can confirm or deny them. Um, if you don't have a quant or data background, what are effective ways of showing proficiency or comfort with data? Yeah, really good question. Um, hmm. I think, I think about data as less about like showing that you can do math and more about showing that you can ask really good questions. So to me, what's important about data is like, again, I'm, I'm not like an analytical expert, right? Like I'm not wizarding up some like amazing investigation using data every day in my job. But what I try to be really good at is asking questions that will help other people think about things in the right way. So even if you're not the person who is like doing the analysis, if you can show that you figured out how to ask the right questions to get the right information, to me, that's like really what's at the heart of being analytical. So maybe you don't have a good example of like doing that stuff, but if you can point to like how you thought about a problem, you might be able to get around those types of questions. Um, and I, I also think like that actually might be a place where a, like a course might be helpful if you wanna point out that you're analytical saying like, oh, you've completed like a SQL course or making sure that you mentioned that you can do that kind of thing. Maybe that's helpful. But I, I also do think that you can learn a lot of this. On, like I learned it on the job. So you can learn a lot of this on the job. So I wouldn't be overly worried about having to have that ready to go. It's just something that if you do have it, you can use it to get your foot in the door if it's like one of the skills that you think you're particularly great at. All right. Um, how related is PM to UX? Super related. Um, UX or user experience or user experience design, um, very related. I have deep respect and love working with my design counterparts. I think that's one of the coolest parts of the job is like, okay, I decide we're going to work on this one problem and they go off and they come back and it's like, they built this really cool thing. Um, and I don't know how they do it. It's magical. Um, but I think one of the, the reasons why it's related is because to be a good PM and to be a good experience, uh, user experience designer or designer, you have to understand um, the customer and you have to understand the workflows that the customers go through. Um, so I would say they're very closely related, but as a PM, you should develop a really good, healthy respect for your designer counterparts because they are going to bring so much good information to the table. Let's see. These are really great questions, by the way. Uh, Tell us about your first year and your first PM role. Was it intimidating? How did you build confidence in roles first time? Yes, very intimidating. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I think the most intimidating part um, is the first time you get up in front of your engineering team and you're like, okay, we're going to work on this thing. And they just look at you in silence. And then you're like, great. Okay, now what? You guys don't care about this. What do we do? Um, so I, I think what was really hard for me when that first job was figuring out how do I get the team excited about the stuff that I think we should build? How much information do they need? What's too much information? Um, so I, I built confidence really by like, again, rather than trying to pretend like I knew what I was doing, my strategy was to say, cause everyone, like, it's not like they didn't know it was my first PM job it was just to be like, I'm new. I don't know what I'm doing. Am I doing this right? Like asking for feedback is something I did a lot. Um, and I would, you know, share, I was writing a, at the time, a TripAdvisor, we wrote specs. So I would ask like, hey, can you guys look at this? Is it right? What did I miss? Like asking people for feedback is a great way to get them to help you. I'm in a great way to get better. 
So I would just say like, admit that you don't know what you're doing and see if someone can help you with it. Um, and I think you also build confidence up over time. Like the more features you ship, uh, the more things you get out the door, like the more confidence you build up, you get used to it. You understand like the rhythms that you have to go through and then eventually it becomes easier. So that's, that's how I did it. Um, I'm, I still get intimidated. I don't think, I don't think that ever really goes away, especially when I'm faced with like a big problem or like a, you know, really smart group of people. And I feel like they all know more than I do. Um, so maybe, maybe you guys have an answer for me on how to get better at that. All right. Have you been in a role where you had to manage about three to four products at the same time? Yeah, that is hard. Um, I think it's, this is pretty common at a startup um, where, you know, if you, if you join a really big company, typically like the, the part of the product you own is like quite small, but the product is huge. Whereas at a startup, like you'll own a larger percentage of the product, but the product itself is typically smaller. Um, so it drifts. There were a couple of instances where um, I was working across a bunch of product teams and I would say I just tried really hard. Again, I just like have a piece of paper next to me on my desk and I would like every day map out like where every product was and like what I needed to do. And that became more of a problem of like time management than anything else. And I would say it turned out okay, not great. I don't love, I, I don't think it's really easy to be a really great PM when you're spread really thin across a bunch of products because you can't think very deeply about them. Um, and then you're just kind of like managing fires and you're not really thinking strategically about what you're doing. So again, I don't think I have a good answer for how to manage like four to five products at a time. It's really hard, um, but if you can do it, amazing. Um, does a PM who writes code have an edge over PMs who don't? Super biased answer because I don't know how to write code, but I would say there's a risk if you do, because when you're a PM and you, you have a background as an engineer, it's really easy to be like, I know how to build stuff. Like, um, you know, being like trying to do the engineer's job is risky because that means you're not doing your job. And so if you have, if you're like too technical, sometimes you can get really bogged down in the details of like the technical implementation. And then like, it's just not what you're supposed to be spending your time on. So I would say like, that's the risk. Um, but again, if you're working on a really complicated product, it can be really helpful and give you an edge because you can understand what's technically possible. I think that's one of the hard, the hard problems about my job right now is that I don't always know what's technically possible. And so I have to spend a lot of time asking engineers about that. Whereas if I, if I had a more of a technical background and that might be easier. Let's see. Um, how do you handle product ideation? I don't know if I have a good, a good one for that. I think there's a, there's a book I would say, um, the team, the Google team wrote a book called Design Sprint. And I would say that's something I would read if you're looking for more information on like how to do brainstorming. I would also like talk to your design team. They're probably going to be better at you, better than you at this kind of stuff. So maybe try to learn from them. Um, what's the difference between a product owner and product manager? I don't, I don't know. I've never worked with product owners. So I don't, I can't answer this one because I, I'm not actually sure what that role is. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pass on that one. Project management, who good one. I hate project managing. Um, it's not natural for me. I struggle with it. Um, but I think it, it, this one I would say really depends on the company you join. So some companies, the PMs do a lot of the project managing. And I think maybe if you're, I would, I think if you're a product owner, you'd probably do a lot of, that's more of what the role is if I know that, if I've heard that correctly. Um, but for project management, at least in my opinion, a PM is ultimately responsible for like getting the thing out the door. So sometimes that means stepping in and helping the team get stuff done. And maybe that means project managing. Sometimes it doesn't. So I would say like your responsibility is to fill the gaps um, and make sure things get done. So sometimes that is project managing. Sometimes it's not. I prefer it when the engineers project manage themselves because we're all adults. But again, it depends on the company that you work for. I think it's probably, it's never going to hurt if you're good at it. And it will be a struggle if like me, you are not good at it. All right. If you could talk to the newly minted PM Maggie, what would you tell her? Ooh, 
I spent a lot of time trying to be right. I think it's really easy. Like I had gone to Harvard Business School. I thought I was, you know, so smart and so good at my job. And um, I probably would have spent a lot more time asking questions and trying to learn and realizing that I didn't have the right answer. And then I didn't have to have the right answer. Like I thought that everything I did, I had to be, it had to be perfect and, and right. And, and that actually slowed me down and got me, got in the way of me getting to the right answer faster. Um, so I, I took me a long time to feel, this is really just the other question, to feel confident enough to share my work earlier so I could get better feedback. So I would say if I, if I could go back, I probably would feel less pressure to get it right and just try to get more feedback and talk to more customers sooner because then I would have built better stuff faster. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. I mean, I still make a lot of mistakes, but I made a lot of mistakes back then. All right. Great. We just had enough time. I am a kid career professional looking to break into PM. I've been looking for PM programs. Mostly. Yep. Yeah. I wish I had a better answer for this question about whether there are eight PM programs for career switchers. That's again, like I went to business school to, to help me switch careers, which is not necessary, but it that's like gave me an opportunity to do it. I haven't seen of an APM associate PM program for people who are mid-career. Um, I think if you're already um, I, I would try to apply like there, I don't know if there's a rule against it. Um, it's just more common for you to maybe supposed or you're supposed to be coming out of a graduate undergraduate. I would also say this is where I would focus on networking. So if there's an APM program, you really want to be a part of try to network your way into it. Um, and then in, this might also be like a, a chance to say maybe an APM program might not work and you can try to switch within the company that you're in, but that is a challenging, challenging place to be. Um, and I think the best thing you can do is try to work your network and like figure out how to get someone to help you. Let's see, we have enough time. How often do you collaborate with other departments and which are your favorites? I love them all the same. Um, I collaborate daily. I mean, I think that a PM, it's really hard to be a PM on an island. So ever you have to work with and through other people. And I would say the departments I work, I think it's like you have your sort of like three-legged stool. So you have product design and engineering or like the, the three teams that have to work together. Um, and I, right now, my design counterpart and my engineering counterpart are both amazing and I love them and they're awesome. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to pick favorites between them. I will say like, I think it's, magical and have so much respect for how engineers like create things out of code. It's just blows my mind. I think it's really cool. And I also think that, um, it's amazing how designers can create these like beautiful functional workflows. Um, that is always seems like magic to me. And I think part of what makes PM fun is you get to work with these teams that are so smart. Um, so that's probably my answer to that. Ho hopefully you're getting a sense that PM PMs are a little slippery. And like, you're never playing favorites and you always have to make everyone happy. So like, it's a bit of the, bit of the I job. That in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, good. We have a couple more minutes. Yeah. So we have five more minutes. Um, so I think we'd only be able to take, so these are the last three questions that we will take for today. In fact, I have okay. to count. We're taking 25 questions, 25. <laughs> That's Hopefully it's high. helpful. That's huge. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maggie. Okay. So, yeah, of course. so the last three questions. For today, yes. Yeah. What's the best part of being, I'm going to save the best part. So I'll ask, answer that one last. Um, what software tool should PM know how to use? Um, I, I would say it just depends on what your teams use. Um, a lot of companies will use some kind of like tracking software, like Jira um, or Asana or ProdPad or something like that. Oh, I would say like Maggie, I'm going to add Drift to it to Drift. get customer feedback. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think that's one thing. Having a chat platform makes it really easy to get customer feedback, which is like a cheat code for us at Drift. Um, but yeah, I would say, I don't, I don't think there's any software tools that PMs need to know how to use that aren't easy to pick up. So I wouldn't over, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Yeah. Um, certification. Yeah. yeah, certification. Um, I know there are some out there. I, I don't know how worth it they are. I think it might be helpful to show like that you are interested in the role and you've learned about it, but you, you don't have to have one. Um, so it could be helpful sometimes, but you don't have to have one. So I would say on that. And then 
Okay, best part of being a PM. I think there's a couple of parts to this. First, I think the real, the coolest part is that back when I was a consultant, a lot of the work I was doing was like understanding business problems and suggesting solutions. But as a product manager, you not only get to figure out what problems to solve, but you get to solve them and you get to help a team like create something and then you get to see customers use it. I think the, one of the best parts about being a product manager is seeing your first feature like out there and then people are using it and then hopefully people like it. Like that's awesome. It's so satisfying. Um, so I think that that's one of the best parts. And then this, the other part of it is that the people you get to work with, I love working with so many different types of people with different types of skill sets, with different backgrounds. I think that keeps the role really fun and interesting. And so part of the PM role is that it's never the same. Like no day is the same as the day before. It's always something new. There's always something new to learn. Um, and that's the other part that I love about it. Ooh, I love How'd I do? Job. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So Maggie, answered 28 questions. Oh my God. Good. Thank Those you were so awesome much. questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you can please stop sharing your screen so that I can oh, yeah, sorry. round off the session. Guys, so please tell me quickly, how did today's session go? Was it insightful? Did you learn something? Please, can I see the chat section, Bobin? I hope Thank everyone learned at Maggie. least one thing. In fact, I learned a lot. Kenny, oh, I enjoyed myself. Really great. What every minute. Oh, thank you so much. I think I think are you sure you would not be going to? Are you sure about MBA is not calling you? <laughs> she was going to ask the question around MBA. All right, great, great. So in about two minutes, we'll be ending today's session. As I said, we keep to time. We start at exactly 6 p.m. and end at, um, at, at exactly 5 p.m. and we end at 6 p.m. So to round off this session, all right, great. So guys, some of you may be aware, right? Or some of you may not know, we have a transfer energy product management course that is starting very soon. You can join the wait list. We'll send the link to you. Um, this program will be kicking off by ending of February, um, but we'll be sharing more details about the program transition into product management course um, via email. And very quickly, if you're not part of the community, please make sure you join the product, product guys community on Slack. If you're not following us yet on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, please do. We will want you to be a part of the family. Trust me, like every minute with us is worth it. We are a big family. As I said, we are over 1,000 on Slack and the community is growing. You know, we, want, we do not want you to miss out on any of the, you know, values offers that we will be giving our community members. And it's exactly 6 p.m. WAT. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Maggie. It was a fantastic time learning from you. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you for sharing your experience. And thank you to everyone, you know, for joining today's session. Thank you. Please feel free to tweet about it. Let us know what you learned, you know, and that's about it. Thank you so much, guys. See you in the next series, next week, Saturday. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you at the next session. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you to be a playback. Yes. <laughs> With Please, our. thank you. With our. With our. My name is Ronke. Sorry. Ronke. Yes. All right. Okay. Hi, Ronke. Thank you for joining. Okay. Okay, guys. So, ending the session now. Bye.